I want to welcome everyone here back for Devos today. And all this week, I'm going to be speaking on the pitfalls of success. You know, normally, I'm bringing some sort of devotion or something along on how to be successful, or usually I teach it. But this one, I'm going to talk about the pitfalls of success. You know, when I talk about pitfalls, uh, a pitfall is like a trap, uh, something like you uh, catch an animal in. Well, the devil will catch us in a trap with the subject matter of success. Now look with me here in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Solomon says this. He says, so I was great. <laughs> Could you imagine saying that about yourself? I mean, God loves Solomon, uh, but he was human. And so he's telling his testimony, and, and this is the way in which he felt about himself. Uh, Benjamin Franklin once said that success has ruined many a man. Boy, that was said many years ago, but we have lived to see that, haven't we? There, there is what is known as the kiss of death when it comes to success. You know, the Russians, uh, when they would have somebody that had an award coming and they were trying to get rid of them, they would have this big public ceremony in which they were giving them a medal. Well, they would have poison on the medal. When they would put the, poison, or the medal on, here they would puncture their skin with the medal and within about 24 hours, they would die. That's what success can do with you if you let it get to you and get inside of you. Um, now, look with me. Let's go down to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Now, notice that the Apostle Paul, I mean, he wrote most of the New Testament, great, great man of God, and he talks about how the devil got to him. It, it talks about how he got this thorn in the flesh and God permitted it because he said, I was exalted above measure. Could you imagine the apostle Paul having a problem with success lifting him up? Now, I want you to listen to this closely. God doesn't care what you do. You could be the, uh, the, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Okay, that's great. But whatever you do, he wants you to do it for his glory. Uh, now, look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2. He says, Solomon, once again, I, I was king over Israel and Jerusalem. Okay, he boasts here now of his accomplishments. He says, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I like it. Notice I built me, me, me. He says, I made me gardens and orchards. I had great possessions. I gathered me also silver and gold. Oh, this, this little obnoxious. Me, me, me. Do, do you know somebody like that? Look with me down here in verse 9. He says, so I was great. Oh, once again, that he, he, he felt that he was great in everything that he was doing. Now, I now want you to see what he says in Proverbs 29, verse 23. He says this, a man's pride shall bring him low. Isn't that true? And boy, the devil will see to it. So wait, how do you fight against this? You, you got to spend time in your knees. The best thing you could do is what you're doing right now. You give God the first hour of every day. Spend some time alone with him. Oh, Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. That's where you get power. That's where God will lift you up. Listen, your call of God is an upward call. Your best is yet to come. God does not want you living in your past success. And if you're always striving to do more for him, and, and you know, just being a success in this world, that gives you a platform to stand on and people will listen to you. And that's where you could be a good witness and testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, God does not care what you do, but it's who you do it for. 